Hi everyone, this is Jess. Uh, today I want to do a summary of my fountain pen journey so far. Uh, um, you can see that here is my master list of the fountain pens I currently have and it dates back to October last year. So um, it has only been like four or five months so far, but I find this uh, experience very interesting. And before I get more into the complexity of fountain pen world, I want to do a, a summary of what I have so far. First, I try to do this in a chronological order and I, fi I find that's not very not very organized and not very informative in uh, in in like in the ways that I wanted to present them. So I want to group them in uh, to talk about them in I want to tell talk about it in like uh, the phases I went through with my fountain pens. And of course, I'll start with the, my reintroductory of my fountain pens. So these four, uh, I have the platinum. Oh, sorry, the um, uh, Pilot Metropolitan, the Platinum Preppy, the Faber Castell uh, Hexel, and the Twisby Go Clear. So these pens reintroduce me to the fountain pen world where I find out that uh, I learned to write with fountain pens because I am a kid from the 90s and early 2000s and since the gel pen took over from that time I haven't really been using fountain pen at all for the longest time and once I picked it up last year to write on uh, the Tomoe River paper in my journals I started to really enjoy the experience and then start to play with all different ink colors and um and the uh, uh, nib sizes for example this gold is a is a broad nib i currently have a sailor menu sakura inside this pen it looks very pretty and it writes very smoothly it skips a little bit so it's not that that consistent but these four really gives me uh, a very good experience that leads me back to the fountain pen world and these four I have I still have them all inked up and use them consistently I still have the original cartridge inside this preppy after I finish this I probably will start use their platinum carbon in this pen since it's a cheaper pen and actually it seals so well I mean I have been using this and keep it in a uh in a just loose pen case uh, for the past few months and I uh, have been carrying around all the time there are very little leak actually from this pen which I that was the my biggest fear going back to fountain pens I don't really want to have inky fingers all the time but this pen holds up very very well so I I really love these pens and like I said this really gave me a very good experience and those are very good uh like uh introductory like a beginner fountain pens for me so my next phase are what i call so i do like to write fountain pens so how about trying some fan favorites so here i got uh i got the lamy safaris two of them uh koiko sport and a twist eco uh, all three of these i got from pre-owned uh, that people sell them on Facebook, I think. And uh, from here, I started to realize, okay, I do have my own preferences and dislikes towards fountain pens. Uh, all four of these writes great, uh, regardless of their name. I think other than this is an extra, uh, I think these two are fine nibs and these two are extra, extra fine nibs. But I do think that these all writes very, very well, especially the Kueko Sport. And uh, this pen is so tiny and so easy to carry around. And I really love writing with this pen. And it's very, it's very, very smooth. And of course, the uh, Eco is a, is some, uh, like, I think this, a lot of people's favorites uh, pen style and after I got this and tried this I f I understand why people love it so much and for these safaris those for the Lamy safaris I don't 
I don't really hate the de I don't hate the design. I think the design is very very unique. And then I I applaud who uh the brands who want to stick with their own design and their their uh, characteristics. Um, I think these pens let me know that I have a preference in color and patterns of the fountain pen body. So for the Lamy pens, I. I, I enjoy writing with this. I, I don't hate, I, I really like the grip. So it, so your finger can, uh, can rest at the right place for you to write. And also the ink window give you indication of how much ink you have uh, left in here. And then these two also have some, some sort of feedback, uh, which is somehow very enjoyable for me. I don't hate the feedback. I sometimes want them uh, when, my, when I, I write on papers. But I find out that the things I don't really like is a hot pink like this. It's just not my color. <laughs> uh, that's that's also some re the reason why for the, the all those designs in the eco I chose the cream with gold, gold rose rose gold trims. I saw there are just so many different colors of these pens, and of course the Kuiko uh, Sports has all those colorful, uh, colorful design. I just find those not as appealing to me. I say more subtle or like uh, some sort of more intricate design. Uh, I just cannot see myself using this pen in any occasions where I probably will be using a fountain pen. So I guess uh, like the color of the body is a big thing for me. It's just my own preference, but these pens are all right, it's very good. I think I still have ink, uh, uh, red ink here. It, I, if I, after I uh, finish that, I probably will clean this out. But these two, I use them, I use these two daily. Um, yeah, I really, really like these as well. So I think this is a phase where I try to test out different uh, pens that people have been recommended. And of course, I have to go to uh, the uh, Jinghao 82s. It just simply because, yeah, a lot of people say it's a like inexpensive pen. It's cost very, very little, uh, but of it's a copy of a more famous or more expensive higher end pen. From a reputable company I, I mean like everybody have their opinions but for me i think what you get what you pay for but like for the price i pay for these these writes very 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 well uh i these are not the original color they come with i just mix and match the finials the barrel the cap and then the yeah the section with them and i find them very nice because I, if I get a new bottle of ink and don't have spare pens, I can put them in here first to test out. And uh, uh, they actually write very well. Uh, this actually is a, if you cannot tell, this actually is a glass dip pen. Yeah, the other four are, um, are uh, all their standard M, M or e, F or EF nibs. I think from all of these, they write pretty well for me. I don't have any issue writing with these pens. And after I test out these, of course, I ends up getting one of the real thing. <laughs> the Sailor, uh, Sailor um, Pro Gear Slim. I got this on, uh, on Amazon and this is definitely a discounted price. I didn't pay the regular retail, uh, retail price price here in the states but i have to say although i really like the design like i really like the clip and the intricate uh cap rings and this is my first gold nib ring a gold nib pen and the gold nib with this kind of feedback is very very satisfying for me to write with my only issue is this pen or well, actually i guess the main, main issue i with this pen is that for a pen that's considered a high end uh the acrylic or the the acrylic body is not as as intricate or as yeah it's not what i want basically i think the body looks uh, not a, a little bit cheap 
I, I didn't pay the premium price for this, of course, but if I do, I will be disappointed. But since this this is discounted, I think it's still worth the price I paid. But from this, I also learned that I sometimes I like to write with a Koweko sport. Uh, but I sometimes, after using this, I understand that maybe I want to have a what I consider as a full size pen. Or like if you drive a car, you probably sometimes you, you use a compact, you get a compact car, it's like, yeah, how about get a standard? From this, I think, yeah, this pen may be a slightly too small. Uh, and also I understand that the manufacturer and the brands will try to push out new products with different color and different, uh, just different combination of colors and details. And from the from these, I understand that maybe I don't really want to pursue uh, a pen simply for the colors. Well, I guess I, I in my words later, but for this, that's what I thought at the time. Yeah. And after this phase, I I I have a good experience with the Jin House. I was like, okay, now I learned that there are so many, uh pens that are made in China that are very good quality. How about I get more? Uh, so I got these three. And uh, these three, this is a Jinghao 100 century. And this is the Aspen V126. Uh, 126, and this is a Hongbian N9. I think among these three, um, this, the, the Aspen is probably has the best nib among these three. I don't think the Hongdian nib is bad, but it does have a, a little bit of uh, feedback, which for people who don't like the feedback, they probably wouldn't enjoy it. And for the Jinghao, I don't really like the, the nib came with the pen, so I changed it. I got a new nib from uh, uh, Kaigalu to change into this pen. And it also was a medium nib I put in here. Uh, I start to realize that actually medium nibs can be fun to write with. Like before this, I pretty much get all the fine nib, extra fine nib to write small uh, characters or letters in the journal. And with this, I was like, yeah, maybe I should branch out uh, not only the brands or like the manufacturer. I probably should go to look at different uh, different nib sizes to uh, to broaden my experience uh, with the fountain pens. And uh, I think these pens also let me know that um, like there are some more like uh, classic pen design can provided by different places and different companies. But eventually the writing experience is very personal. I mean, uh, like for this S1 V126, I'm very, very curious to see how it's compared to a Pilot's Custom A23, for example, after I got that one, eventually, sometime in the future, I guess. But this pen, it is definitely acrylic body, but it feels like glass. And then this frosted, frosted uh, clear body with a demonstrator with a big nib, big number six nib and the vacuum filler make this pen such a, like it's, it feels like a premium pen for me. Although this costs less than $30, I think, uh, on Amazon, uh, which impresses me so much. Um, so I guess I will, I was still want to, I, I, I really enjoy uh, like this pen specifically among these three, but I also understand that some of the pens, they they might, like especially for the Jinghao, they might not have the consistency some premium uh, companies has. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I'm glad I tested out some of the very good or uh, like reputable companies in China. <clears throat> And uh, like I said, I from this pen, I realized that uh, the Kai glue I got it actually only has the nib itself. It's not a, it's not a nib section with feed. So I started to learn how to disassemble and reassemble a fountain pen, especially the nib section. Uh, 
And that's when I start to realize, yeah, I probably can branch out and test uh, like different pen and nib combinations. That's when I want to see how different nib feels like for me. And so I got the uh, Narwhal Shoe Kill first with a fine nib and change it into double bra. And I really enjoy writing with this. And this Hongdian Forest, I think it's called the num the, it's also called like 1861. This is a carbon fiber body with a long blade nib, which uh, is basically have a knot on the tip. It writes beautifully uh, in Chinese. I really enjoy writing with this pen uh, right now. And also it feels heavy. It feels substantial in the hand. I don't cap this pen. You, I don't cap most of my pens. I think if you cap this, it probably it post this. If you if you post this, it co could be a little bit backweighted a little bit maybe. But if you don't, yeah, this feels substantial in the hand. And yeah, I really like the Hongdian uh, forest. And of course, the I have been really really love my first dub nib. Uh, this is a uh, Narwhal uh, Original Plus. It's a, also it, it is again it's a vacuum filler. Um, I put the Colorverse, uh, the Year of the Dragon, Blue Dragon with glistening gold inside. Oh, I enjoy this pen so much. It's a uh, it's a stamp nib, and I write title with this, and then it, it never gave me a, a hard start. Uh, and and this is a, another Hongdian. I think it looks very similar to that one. Right? Oh no, this one oh, actually. It looks like a. Oh, sorry. This is an S one actually. It's an S one. See, I mix this up. This is an S one P fifty, and this is a Hongdian N9. You know, you see these two looks kind of similar, especially the shape and the acrylic. So the these are all the those like lighter acrylics. But this pen is special for me because it had it come it came with a buck and and buck nib. Uh, I think these I consider this as my. Let's see what the fuss about the nibs face. <laughs> so, uh, and then this pen writes so smoothly, and it's. I don't know if I can find a writing sample for this for this uh, nib, but. Um, so these four pens give me some idea about how a nib can exp can give you a so different experience. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to write different right here. Yeah, this is uh, the S5, S5 nib uh, with the box nib. Mm, but this is also the pen that made me realize that I probably need to pause and rethink about my uh, my way of approaching this hobby because when I got this, I forgot I bought it. Um, with so I was like, maybe I got too many fountain pens right now. Uh, so af so I, of course I want still want to mention my first Nautilus, uh, a Narwhal Nautilus because I think among those. This is probably my only pen that's beyond $150. So this is a premium price. Well, for me, this is a more expensive pen uh, at this point, but I really, I think I really pay for the design and the color. Uh, the nib writes, uh, okay. I don't think this has anything special compared to like a $55 or $60 uh, shoe kill. If I we are simply talking about the nib experience, but this is such a beautiful pen to behold. Um, like I said, I already said that I want to be more cautious about my purchasing, but I do still. I'm very curious about different fountain pens and what the uh like their different recommendations and the characteristics of different pens. Mm. I did have these four, uh, 
in a different location. So I basically bought these in China to send to my parents to keep. And these are all narwhal pens, and two of them are the Voyage models, and two of them are Nautilus model. And the two Nautilus models are the year of the pen of the year, like a rabbit and dragon. Um, yeah, I I don't know when I will get them, but uh, the fact that I have them somewhere <laughs> makes me kind of pretty happy. I think my next phase would probably be a let's test out those uh, classics. Uh, or like the premium classics pen. So what I have in the mail are a Pilot Custom 742, a Platinum 3776, and a, a Sailor 1911 uh, standard. So like those are the big three Japanese companies, gold pen, uh, that's our classics. So I also bought a second-hand Pelican M200. Um, that's also in the mail. And uh, I think eventually I have pre-ordered my first, like, I think that's the premium, premium pen for me, which is the Leonardo uh, Memento Zero Grande. I haven't got them, but... Let me know if you want to. You guys want to see an unboxing or anything? I want. I I can do with those pens. I think those will be my next phase, which is, I will have a more subs more serious, uh, testing of those classics. With that, uh, so I will just. Uh, <laughs> this is this is my current favorite. I just have to say this is my current favorite favorite pen to write in any occasions. I want to pull this out. Uh, whenever I can, and the ink inside is the Urban, uh, Urban Pursier de Lume, yeah, the purple ink. I really love this pen. So with that, I'll just uh, sign off and hope you guys have a wonderful day or weekend or night. Bye.